Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This single verse of scripture opens inquiry into the many, many issues of life, death, and eternity. I'd like for us to think this morning about th five things uh, that uh, should arouse our interest from this single verse of Scripture. I call it five points to ponder. You know what it means to ponder. To ponder is to think seriously. To ponder is to meditate upon. To ponder is not to think lightly, but to think deeply. I want us to think this morning on five points to ponder. The first point that I would call your attention to is that life is short. Many people do not uh, live in the realization of the brevity of life. James 4.14 uh, 4, asks a question. What is your life? And that same verse answers the question. It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. I remember when I was small boy on a cold winter morning I would blow my breath and a stream of vapor would come out from my mouth it might be as much as a foot long but just as abruptly as it appeared it was gone vanished away The Bible uses this illustration to indicate the brevity of life. Life is short. Um, Job said in uh, chapter 7 verse 6, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. And many of you would not be familiar with that. But uh, I, when, when I was a little fellow and visited my grandma, uh, she had some upstairs room that she, rooms that she never used anymore, but it was a good place for me to prowl. And I discovered some real treasures up there. And uh, one of them was a loom. And on the side of this loom was a handle. And I learned that when you move that handle, the shutter flies back and forth faster than the eye can behold. This is what uh, Job was talking about when he was talking about his days, his life. Uh, swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Life is short. Life is unpredictable. We have no guarantee of tomorrow, for that matter, of the next hour. A few years ago, I, a preacher friend of mine had surgery in Scott and White Temple in, uh, in Temple, and I visited him uh, after his surgery. He was in high spirits. He's looking forward to go home, going home the next day. But the next morning, his son called me and said, my dad is gone. Overnight, that quickly, life is taken away. Life is short and unpredictable. But life offers its opportunities. It may be a vapor, but life offers its opportunities. Then as a vapor, 
it is gone. Um, I don't know whether you are familiar with Thomas Paine, the atheist, the author of the book, uh, The Age of Reason. His book uh, denied the Christian faith, ridiculed Christians, put down everything that was uh, uh, of a nature uh, of what the Christians believe. Anything that had to do with the Lord Jesus Christ, his book well, decried that. But that atheist, Thomas Paine, lay dying. And suddenly he cried out, I would give worlds if I had not written the age of reason. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Christ, help me. Stay with me for God's sake. Send even a little child to stay with me for it is hell to be alone. If the devil ever had an agent, I'm that one. But what an alternative when one chooses life. When the missionary Adoniram Judson was dying, he said, I go, I go with the gladness of a boy bounding away from school. I'm strong in Christ. And I, I've read about the life of Stonewall Jackson, the great Southern general in the Civil War. He uh, was accidentally shot and killed by his own men, but he was a great Christian. And uh, Stonewall Jackson uh, died a few days after he was wounded and he said I'm just going to cross over the river and rest beneath the trees on the other side what a glorious testimony this verse of scripture offers two alternatives life or death but the second point I would make is that eternity is long. Scientists claim that they can uh, calculate the past even to millions of years. They have, they have ways of dating, that sort of carbon dating they call it, uh, and that may well be. Oftentimes I find that they have to reconstruct their analogies, they have to reconstruct their findings uh, and readjust their time frames. But even so, if they can, there's one thing they haven't been able to do. No one has been able to date or calculate how long eternity is. Eternity is beyond any possible comprehension. But the third point to ponder is that sin is dark and ugly. This world we live in is full of sin. David said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. I think one thing David meant was that we come into this world with a bent towards sinning. One of the first words that a baby learns while it is still lying in the crib kicking is no. No. We have the tendency, a bent toward sin. None of us have escaped from sin. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've known some of the sweetest people the world has ever produced. 
you'd think that they were squeaky clean in every, every possible way. <coughs> Especially uh, older men and older women who weathered the storms of life and uh, have, ex have had experiences beyond any, anything we can imagine. And yet they a sweet-spirited, committed, com uh, apparently committed completely to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet I've heard some of them give their testimony that they have sinned against the Lord. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Our text offers two alternatives where sin is concerned. Those two alternatives are death and eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. A few years ago, I had to go to the pain clinic. Uh, they were gonna give me a shot and I was waiting in this little room when a doctor came in and he sat down in front of me and he said, well, I, uh, by law, I have to tell you that there are two uh, side effects, two possible side effects to this shot that we're going to give you. I had to ask him what those two side effects were. I said, well, sir, uh, what are those two side effects? He said, death or paralysis. He wasn't joking. He was serious. He said, I have to tell you by law what these two possible side effects are. They're death or paralysis. paralysis. Well, those were side effects. Our scripture that does not offer side effects, it offers alternatives. They're not possible side effects, they're alternatives. It's either uh, death or it's eternal life. But the fourth point that every human being needs to ponder is that hell is certain. The Bible has more to say about hell than it does about heaven. The Bible calls hell a place of fire. Matthew 25, 41 says, Depart from me, a ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Hell is also a place of suffering. In Luke Chapter 16, Jesus tells about the rich man and Lazarus. You remember that story. Well, Lazarus died and went to heaven. And then the Bible says uh, the rich man also died. And he went to hell. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, please send Lazarus that he may dip just the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in these flames. Of course, you know Abraham's answer to that was, it cannot be done. For between us and thee is a great gulf fixed that no man can cross. Hell is a place of suffering. Men and women, boys and girls, who've not put their faith and trust in Christ as their personal Savior, as their Redeemer from sin, and their hope for eternal life, are facing eternity in hell. And yet so often they take it so lightly. The issue 
of being lost, eternally lost, to spend eternity in such a place is beyond my comprehension. It is a place of suffering. And then there's a place, hell is a place with the vilest kind of associates. <coughs> Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 says, The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having to spend eternity in that kind of company? But I have one other point to ponder. It is the most important point of all. And my friend, that is that heaven is calling. It is heaven calling when the Bible says, Come unto me all ye, uh, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there's none else. It is heaven calling when in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, we find that glorious invitation. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. Five points to ponder. It's worth the while of every man, woman, boy, and girl. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, my friend, to take seriously, to ponder these five points and turn your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you trust Him today if you haven't been saved? Is there a young person here this morning you say, Pastor, no, I've never confessed Christ as my Savior. But this morning, this morning, I want to turn my heart and my life over to Jesus. Would you do that? We're going to stand and sing an invitation hymn. If you'd come this morning, share your decision with us.